thank you, everybody. Um, um, and thank you for, uh, thanks, Kim, for driving three hours to be here today. It, uh, on a serious note, to let your sister come up in front of all these people and introduce you, <laughs> knowing all the things I did to her when we were a kid, I was a little nervous about what she was going to say. But thank you. I love you. Um, I'd also like to thank and, and congratulate all the other winners tonight, and uh, you should be so proud of yourself and, uh, and, and your companies and all that you've accomplished. And uh, I'd just like to congratulate everyone. And Michael and the group of Fort Worth News, thank you for, uh, for recognizing us today. It's really uh, it's quite an honor. And we'd also, without our vendor partners that uh, have been so important to us, we wouldn't be here today. But what's really most important is the, and really the reason we're here is our, our team that runs our business. And I've always said in our business that footwear is the engine that pulls the train. It's really our, our, our most iconic business. And, uh, and our team here that runs that business is here tonight. And I'd like all of you guys to stand up in a, a big round of applause for what you guys do. You guys, are, you, you guys are great. What I want to do is just tell you a really quick story. I know we've got a time constraint. I'm going to try to stay real close to that. But I'm going to tell you a story. Retail, especially as we get into the holiday time, retail is an interesting business all year long. But it's really an interesting business when it comes uh, to the holiday time. Because being in the retail business, you get to make people's dreams come true. And you get to make them, you, you give them the opportunity to buy the perfect gift for that perfect person. So I'm going to tell you my favorite retail story at holiday time. It was about, and this was a long time ago, my hair was a different color, I didn't need to wear glasses back then, and I was working on the sales floor back in, uh, in one of our two stores in Binghamton, New York. I was a pretty young man at the time, and it was Christmas Eve, and it was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we closed at 5 o'clock. And this woman came barreling into the store, and I saw her, and I walked up to her and said, hi, how you doing, can I help you? She goes, I need to find a gift for my sister-in-law. I said, you know what? I said, we've got some sweaters over here. Let me show you these sweaters. So I walked over here to these sweaters, and I showed her this pile of sweaters that we had just marked down. And she looked at me, and she said, those are the ugliest sweaters I've ever seen. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I know they're pretty ugly. That's why we just marked them down. I said, you know what? <laughs> Let me show you these sweaters over here. So I took her over to these other sweaters, and uh, as I'm walking over there, she's not following me. And I looked over at her, and she's kind of rummaging through these sweaters. And I said, we've got some other sweaters that are a lot nicer over here. She still rummaged through those sweaters. She picked up the ugliest sweater in the, in, in the bunch and looked at me and said, I'll take this one. My sister-in-law, biggest bitch I've ever met. <laughs> so it's really great to know you can make somebody have a really great holiday. Um, but on a bit more of a serious note, my sister said uh, that uh, she kind of talked about, in our business, it's always been about kids. And, and we learned that from my, my father who started the business and uh, you know, bought the business from my dad and we had two small stores. And it was always about, uh, it was always about kids. And uh, we've really tried to do things that can really help and impact kids' lives. Um, and uh, there's two really big things that are impacting kids' lives today. One is, uh, one is the, the violence, gun violence that you'll see inside and outside of schools. And we've slowly changed and, and modified our gun policy for a number of years. And culminating in the, the shooting in Parkland, we knew we had to do something. We knew that this, this system was broken and we had to do something. And uh, I, I still get emotional when I think about those kids and those parents. And, uh, we said that uh, we really needed to do something, and we sat down and talked about what we were going to do, and we decided that what we needed to do was stand up and talk about how the system was broken and the changes that we think should be made. And some of those changes that we made that day, we said that we would take all the assault-style rifles out of every store, and we would never, ever put those back in. We said that we would remove high capacity magazines from the store and we would never sell those again and we said that we would never sell a gun to anyone under 21 years of age ever again. We went, thank you. 
And we came under an awful lot of pressure from an awful lot of people, whether it was the NRA or a, a number of, of groups that really tried to pressure us. And I can tell you that we never, ever wavered from this stance, never went back, backed anything off, and we've continued to do that today, and we will always continue with this stand. We talked about this a number of times with our management team and our board, and if we had, a, to use a golf uh, analogy, if we had a mulligan, we would do it all again exactly the same way. And we continue to keep this conversation going in hopes that we get some change, meaningful change in, the, uh, in our gun laws. The second aspect that's really uh, affecting kids' lives today is what's going on in, the, uh, in, in youth sports from a funding crisis. Right now today, there's 27% of the public high schools, mostly inner city high schools, low income high schools, there's 27% of those high schools today that don't have a sports program. So think about that. 27% of the high schools in this country don't have a sports program, which means that these kids have no place to go after school. They have no place to go to be with their friends. They've got no place to be, feel like they belong. They've got no place to be mentored by their coaches. And what we've done through our Sports Matter Foundation, sports were a big impact on my life. I was never quite, my dreams were always better than the talent that God gave me. But I loved every minute of, what, of, of when I played and it really made me be able to do some of the things that I've done today. What we've done is we created our Sports Matter Foundation. Over the last five years, we've invested about $100 million in this program and we've touched about a million kids who are able to play sports, who have a place to go, have a place where they feel that they belong, have a, feel, a place where they feel that they make a difference. It's pretty tough to grow up today. In, uh, in, I, I think it's really much harder to grow up today than it was when, when I grew up. And kids need a place to find their self-esteem. They need to find a place where they feel good about themselves. And not every kid is gonna be able to find their self-esteem in the classroom. A lot of kids are gonna be able to find their self-esteem because they can hit a baseball, they can throw a football, or they can sing in the school play. And it's really important to have these extracurricular activities for these kids because if they don't have a place to go, they don't have somebody to mentor them, they don't have something constructive to do, we all know what can happen. It's tough to get into a good place. I've always felt that our nation's most precious natural resource are our kids. And we, don't, we need to make sure that we spend enough money on them, we need to spend time on them, we need to love them, and we need to educate them. And this is why we've continued with this program, and we'll continue with it for a very long time. And uh, our kids are just so important. Our business has always been around uh, about kids, and it will always be about kids. 